NVIDIA shares have soared as tech companies snap up their chips to rush into artificial intelligence. This excitement has helped push stocks up almost 15 percent this year. Has NVIDIA and, and the market as a whole gone too far? Joining me now is NYU Stern School of Business finance professor, better known as the Dean of Valuation, Oswath Demodaran. Uh, professor, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me on, Jack. Uh, so before we get to NVIDIA, I'd just like to ask you about the overall market. As I mentioned, stocks, as you know, stocks are about 15 percent this year. Earnings are pretty much dead in the water. Is it possible to say how you feel about the valuation of the market as a whole? Or is there so much dispersion that it, that doesn't really be meaningful? It's a combination of dispersion and a manic depressive <laughs> behavior on the part of the market. Just two weeks ago. I was in CNBC and everything was amazing. I mean, people couldn't find a cloud on the horizon. <laughs> Two weeks later, the world has ended. I mean, it's this has been the pattern for the last year and a half, is the market overreaches, then it corrects. But to be honest, I think I'd prefer what the market is doing to what the experts are, which is to be consistently wrong and never change course. <laughs> uh, and also, I guess, buy when everything is dismal and when everybody gets happy, you sell. Let's turn to NVIDIA. Everybody's very happy about that stock. You have a really interesting way of looking at it that I think is helpful for investors looking at anything. Can, can you break down your thesis on NVIDIA? OK, let's step back. We look at NVIDIA and you look at the semiconductor chip business. The business itself is mature. This is no longer a growth business overall. So the question is, what's NVIDIA done in the last decade that's allowed them to set themselves apart from the rest of the competition? Because you look at Intel, you look at Taiwan Semiconductors, they don't, they don't benefit like NVIDIA does. And the answer, I think, is the company's been incredibly opportunistic. Opportunistic in what sense? It's found big markets ahead of time, it's invested ahead of time, and it's succeeded by being there first. You go back over the last decade, you had the gaming business, you had the crypto business, and now you have the AI business. This can't be accidental. In all three businesses, NVIDIA has managed to be the first one there and to end up dominating at least the starting stages of that business. So I think from that perspective, that is the thing that keeps NVIDIA shareholders going, is the conviction that they will find a way to get into the next big market and keep going, because by itself, you look at the markets they're in, they're not big enough to justify the market cap that the company has. So, in other words, in order to justify this price, they not only have to keep dominating all this, but they have to have some new thing we haven't even seen yet and dominate that as well. Yeah. And so, it's not such a bad bet. That's why when people say, I'm buying NVIDIA, I'm not going to talk them out of it. I just have, have they need to recognize that they're building in the presumption that there will be another big market out there that we don't even know about yet, that NVIDIA will find a way to dominate. Is there a sector, and even better, a specific stock, perhaps, where investor expectations don't require that many things to go right? Something you like that's a little bit cheaper? Well, you can go boring, <laughs> and you can get less, less mistakes. But remember, risk and opportunity are tied together. So the businesses where you're going to have the least trouble forecasting the future are the businesses we're going to find the fewest mistakes. So in a, in a sense, I think it does make sense for investors to try to get their hands around the AI business and what's coming and try to see if they can find companies early in the process, because by the time they become stars, it's often a little too difficult to get them at the right price. But I think there is a payoff to doing your homework and dealing with the data rather than with just fairy tales. Can you name a, uh, a sector that looks fairly valued or even better yet, attractively valued right now? I think overall, the market is not misvalued so monstrously. You look at it and say, this is a bubble. This is not the 1999 market or even the 2007 market. It's a market that's overreaching. It's overreaching because I think it built in at least two weeks ago the presumption that we're in for a soft landing and inflation will go away. It's not going to be that easy. So that's why even two weeks ago, I said it's going to be three steps forward, two steps back, sometimes three steps back, because we're going to keep getting data that makes us rethink those assumptions. So by itself, I don't think the market is, is, is the kind of market you look at and say, I'm staying out of stocks altogether. You've got to pick and choose. And the time to pick and choose is when you see a sector being damaged significantly and you step in and say, now's the time to get in. Got it. And at least the fixed income portions of their portfolio are giving you something these days. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Dermodoran.
Thank you for having me.